Jaguar. You know, here's this giant Jaguar <laughs> here up in the new addition today. Uh, we missing our homeboy Tony today. I uh, had a death in his family, so our hearts go out to you and your family, Tony. I'm ready for an exciting show today. Uh, we just got special guest again. He's been on a couple times. Hope he's a little easy on my boy Hen Dog, you know, because you know, <laughs> if you get at him on them stats, but it starts to show off. What's up, big hand? How you doing today? What's up, baby dude? Oh, you know how I like to come on this thing. We don't real hyped and loud, but also giving uh, prayers out to my boy Tony, man. And I don't want y'all to just pray for him, man. And uh, JFL, we are live today. And also Black History Month. Yes, sir. We celebrate the Black Pride, Black Honors in this morning, all the way to this to that. You know what I'm saying? But I'm let me introduce our first guest. Chip, tell him what's up, baby. Hey, what up, what up, what up, baby John? Uh, thank y'all for having me on the show. It's your boy Chip for the... That is so irresponsible. Irresponsible Mentors Podcast. Uh, hey, uh, I want to give shout outs and prayers to Tony. I, I know he's usually always on the show when I come, so uh, sorry to hear about that. Uh, we'll definitely pray for him, but without further ado, thank y'all for having me on, and uh, let's get it. I'm going to go, hey, John, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be quiet. My wife says she's seen the last show. She says, you are not the damn host of the JFL. So, I love I'm gonna, it. hey, <laughs> I'm going to fall back this one, all right? <laughs> So I'm, I'm going to take over Tony's uh, corners today. Oh, yeah, so um, talking to a lot of people, it's crazy that, you know, we need to support the small businesses. Uh, a lot of people, especially the restaurant industry, a lot of, you know, small businesses have, you know, three or four restaurants and now they're down to one. Uh, so they're super struggling. So I know personally, when I do go out, uh, which is a rare event, uh, I do try to support the local thing. I'm not going to fast food. I'm not going to the big chains, you know, because I, I feel like with that, they can, sustain longer than the guy that has one business so everybody out there listening definitely support the small guy before the big one especially these times of need because a lot of businesses closing up and i hate to say it when they do close who knows if they're gonna come back or not uh that's it big john we want to start the day off with today well man let me let me go and give a little piece of that okay. because i know tony would say something about this and and what the what the mayor do i gotta give it up to him because i like this type of stuff He's getting all the homeless man into shelters. So right now, I think he did the first 50 in the shelters, man, getting them off the street. They've been great. So it's the new project in Jacksonville. And I just think it's great, man, because we helping people. You feel what I'm saying? We see them. I give them money every time. Or when I used to work with companies, oh, I see them. So now it seems like, man, they get something. It's good to have a roof over your head, man. You know what I'm saying? And not to be out in this cold and this rain, what's going on. So I just, I got to give them up for that. But just for doing that, man. And I know JFL, I got a lot of clothes. Because I'm going to bring it to one of those missions. JFL, we go pack up what we got and we bring it. I got it. I'm ready. I just, I just want to help people, man. And that's that's what we should be about. We should help one another. So that, that was just another thing I know Tony would have mentioned, man. So it's Black History Month. We got to get it. So I got to, we got to proud represent it, man. You feel what I'm saying? So I want y'all to come on in. Come on in the big hands. What's the name? I'm going to show you what I got, and I'm going to let everybody else do what they do. But I got the Willie Mays catch right here, man. I got the What's legend. so special about the catch? Explain to people, like, what's so special about the catch? Uh-uh, my memory ain't like that. What you know about it? I can't remember. I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. I got to put you on the hey, spot. Hey, you put me on the spot, but I'm just showing you what I got. Okay. We got Willie Mays. Okay. <laughs> but we do know about this one, Walter Payton. Walter Payton. Yep. Hey, man. Legendary. The hardest working man in football still to this day. And I think Jerry Rice got his work at the front. Man, if y'all ever seen it, see his special, it, it's amazing. I didn't know a man can do all this. <laughs> That's something. <laughs> Damn. But then you know the Brown, hey, yeah. legendary himself, man. Hey, just 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 honoring and giving respect to these guys that's been in this this league and and paved the way for us, man. Oh, can't forget the music, Isaac. Hey, they used to call him the Moses, right? Black Moses. Yeah. I think if I'm not mistaken, but hey, he was a true legend. And then I got art. I got African art here, man. Just just beauty, man. I gotta show y'all this. This was given to uh, my wife from a friend of ours, Kabini Barrow. One of the, uh, he tried to, he running for president in Guinea probably 2024. And uh, man, I think this is a king, man. I can't remember which uh, which which place he got it, which part of Africa he got it from. But, but just look, if you can see this, 
a detail. There's a lot of detail in there. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Look at the detail. And you remember the tools they used? They was like sticks in. If I'm not mistaken, if, if I'm wrong, y'all just put it on Facebook and let me know. <laughs> and just, just being in the detail, man. I love it, man. We just giving the honor to our, our, our heritage and our, our culture, man. It's, it's just a, you know, thing. What you, you got anything, Chip, man? Man, you now. know, it would, <laughs> you know, I'm a basic dude. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> I am excited about Black History Month. Uh, I think me and my wife are gonna check out um, the new movie by Nate Parker, American Skin, later. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, I know that's on Amazon Prime, and I think there's another movie that just came out on HBO Max about uh, the um, Black Panthers and what yeah. happened in Philadelphia, oh, yeah, the was, shootout yeah. and stuff. Yeah, so I'm gonna check those movies out and stuff. Uh, but you know, uh, I wish we had more than 28 days, but we'll take it. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, I'm I'm happy about it. Uh, we definitely gonna touch on that on my show. But you know, Valentine's Day is coming up, so you know, uh, you know, you, 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 it's, it's time to go get some stuff. You know, if you haven't already, you know, skedaddled and gallivant to the store, like up here in the DMV. It's like uh, six degrees, so I definitely need to get to the store because you know I'm running a little late right now. So <laughs> you ain't you ain't the only one. Nah, no, every year, every year, same thing. Hey, if you wait for the day of and get the stuff, it's like fifty percent off. So <laughs> you might as well buy the day of that morning and sneak out the house. Yeah, yeah, my wife ain't a big flowers person, so she always likes the edible arrangements and stuff like that. So she makes it easy. So my 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 what well, I do, man, I. Uh, you know, I kind of set up the, the massage and make sure my daughter go do her feet and nail. This is what we're doing in a quarantine state. <laughs> every, uh, every, she know how to do that. I know how to massage. Uh, man, watch a movie, uh, fix the dinner. Yeah. Man. No, no. Who, who's cooking dinner? Are you cooking dinner? Or... <laughs> hey, you know my daughter cooking. I, ain't I know she. I got this. <laughs> you know she know how to do the thing now. So you just buy it. You let her cook yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You just buy it, cook it, man, and, and and that's that's what's gonna be all about the time. We're gonna have a good time. We're doing it all with the kids anyway. <laughs> so let me ask you guys something here. So with Black History going this month, what do you guys usually do like during the month? Do you do anything special? Do you go back and read? You know. A certain book or you know do you try to find out like a new you know someone like a history that you never knew like okay this was the first person like the other day i was watching the first uh black uh sniper on valuetainment and you know listening to his story to his interview so do you guys do you guys try to go back and look at new stuff do you rehash whole memories like what's black history month to you guys personally well well for me real quick i i go back and i learn more about even more i mean it's it's so much that the new stuff is coming out. It ain't even new, it's already been done. Hidden figures, uh, Ma uh, uh, Third Good Marshal, all those stories are just coming forward. You know what I'm saying? So, and now the new history is what they're doing now. Black Lives Matter and people in different communities building their community. That's the new, that's the stuff we gonna hear in the next 10, 20 years. And with, with, with this, with the old, with the stuff that's already been done, that's still coming. I mean, I'm still, I mean, it's more and more keep coming. I'm like, what? Ain't this movie now true? <laughs> ain't that ain't the Black Moses? Ain't that true? Yeah, that's yeah, true. yeah. I, it, I've heard about that before, yeah. but no, now that it's coming to the forefront, that we weren't taught that in, in the history books in our schools. I, I went to school in Jacksonville. I never heard of anything happening uh just like black wall street just learning black, about oh my god yeah, so black wall street. street i was like what yeah they, yeah. they wiped up, yeah we I wiped up the whole community in tulsa so so it, so that shows you how much we learned in school and where i'm from Nashville. And what hey guess who i heard i know they about martin Luther king all day <laughs> and I, that's what they that's what they got that's what they gave to them. that right there a little bit of this a little bit of rosa park man I that was mine. it. Yeah, I learned mine from my program I had. I have a future that was ran by my man Calvin Peters. I, you know, we did talent shows. We did, and we did it. <laughs> I learned a lot what I knew back then, what we all knew back then in the nineties. So I learned that then. Well, yeah, I think with I think too now is just because with the internet, it's so much more open oh instead of a God. book, and that's all you have is a book, and that's your information, and that's it. You know, thank you for the internet. Thank you for giving me people that's bringing it to the forefront. I love it. Hey, I'm just like, wow, man. I yeah, this month, I'm like you said, like this month, I'm gonna read. 
I have started reading. If you haven't got this book yet, this book is phenomenal. It's uh yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta get this book. I'm about 50 pages in and stuff. So it's a thick book. Uh President Obama, this is part one. Uh so I know he said he's gonna come out with part two. So that book right there, I'm, I'm gonna read that throughout the month. And then one thing I have to do being in the DMV is go see Black Lives Matter Plaza because I haven't been down there since they established that because of COVID and stuff. So um, my, my co-host, he went down there before uh, he had to go take care of some stuff on, on the business side, what he does. And he said it was phenomenal that they, they actually named the Black Lives Matter Plaza. It's right in front of the White House. I mean, it probably, it probably was a, <laughs> it probably was a big F you to the past administration, <laughs> but uh, it's still there now. So it's, it's something that's phenomenal. So I'm definitely going to try to go see that for Black History Month, because that is history, making a plaza based off of a movement. So with, you know, with the Black Lives Matter, you see, you know, African Americans are getting more power, being more recognized. Someone switched it to the NFL now. You see quarterbacks now saying, hey, I want to be a part of this. I want to make the decisions. How do you guys feel that the transition to the NFL is now? Because, uh, you know, you got um, Holmes, not Holmes, I'm sorry, Russell saying, hey, I want to be a part of it or I'm out. You see Deshaun Watson saying, hey, I want out because you're not including me. So how do you think now the quarterback position has changed since, you know, back in the day? I mean, uh, go, ahead, no, go, go ahead, John. Go ahead. No, go ahead, John. No, I just believe you. When these guys come up and do this, you got to understand the guy's story, man. What has he been through? What's making him, what's driving him? Like, my foundation, I'm just driving me inside, but it ain't moved yet, but it's, it's still in me. And, and for to get the opportunity, why not? Why not? He's smart, ain't he, right? We, off, we ain't dumb. You, you see us graduate. You see my boy Tennessee, he'll fool my boy, be an engineer. Come on, it's it's we still are we still go do things other than football, and that's what he's going at. So man, up respect to it, man. And that's y'all, you got to see us other. Stop looking at football. When you see Russell Sim in in a suit and looking good, don't say football player. He must be some type of businessman right now. How you doing, sir? Hey, Russell. You know, not always an autograph. Just gonna say hello. How you doing? Not always want some. Just yeah, that makes us feel good. Just say how you doing. And I, I don't have that plenty of time. People just come up to me and say, Big John, I just want to say thank you and then and thank you for doing it for the Jaguar. Man, that made me feel good. They ain't want nothing. They just wanted <laughs> to say thank you and shake my hand. I'm like, man, he treated me like not a just person. A football. Yes, man. Yeah. Yes. You see? So we, we like it too. We still human. I think I'm human. Let me pitch myself. Yep, it's blood. It's blood. <laughs> so it, it's coming out. So go ahead, Chip. Yeah, I mean, like he said, like uh, I mean, all these quarterbacks are you know, they're starting to, you know, know everything outside of being a quarterback and looking at the business side of it. Um, I still don't know why Deshaun Watson isn't happy. Uh, I mean, uh, I've seen something that came out with Ed Reed that he said that when he was there, he brought up the concerns in Houston and said that it was a toxic place and nobody wanted to work there. Um, and I think, what was the quarterback, number 80? Fucking uh, Johnson? Was yeah, it Johnson? Yeah, yeah. yeah, he said he wasn't happy. Like, so I mean, he left like when he still had years left on his career. Oh, Andre so that, Johnson, yeah. Yeah, Andre Johnson. Like, so I mean, the year of like the years of the quarterback just being predominantly um a Caucasian position is I mean, it's it's always probably gonna be that way, but then you're gonna have your standouts. And I think um when you got Patrick Mahomes, which if he retired today, he would be a Hall of Famer. You know, he he got as much Super Bowls as Aaron Rodgers. He's been in the league for three years. So yeah. I mean, I don't think that's gonna go nowhere. And I think the NFL, um, they they have done a lot of stuff to promote the Black Lives Matter. I think the NBA has because you gotta think when this was like four years ago, um, uh, when that past administration came in, it was kind of taboo to say Black Lives Matter. Last year is when it became cool, you know what I mean? And like LeBron James said, it's not a movement, it's it's Black Lives Matter isn't a movement. It's a thing. So, and like, I understand Black Lives Matter. And I know you, you probably have a diverse uh, amount of people that listen to this show. And I think all lives matter. Like, that's cool to say that, but you got to recognize the Black Lives Matter as a whole. So it's not a terrorist organization. It's not nothing like that. It was started because of the unarmed killing of Black men in America. So that's where that came from. Well, I definitely, I definitely think, you know, Black Lives Matter is helping not just, you know, the Black quarterbacks. I think it's helping all of them. 
Because at the end of the day, though, John can tell you, the NFL is a bad business. It, it's cruel. It's yeah. not nice. They'll get rid of you as soon as they can. And you have no say whatsoever. You really have no voice in the NFL. And I think now with the guys coming out saying, hey, I want to be a part of this. Hey, I'm not just a dumb jock. You know, this is my legacy. This is my brand. I want to put everything forth to it. You know, and I think with slow these guys doing, I think it's going to force the NFL and the owners to go ahead and give the players some more respect and some more power. Because am I right, John? Compared to the NBA, NFL guys are powerless. The only, you say the wrong the only, thing, you're done. Boom. The only way it's going to happen is they all stand together. Yes. They, if that's the only, you got to understand. They all stand together. Just not, just not, you know, not, I, ain't, I ain't no black, I ain't no rape, all that crap. I'm just saying, just how the white people stood back in the day, they stood together. They might hate them, but they stood together and they and they built and did all that. We separated. They separated us. Let's be real. They separated. Keep us from being, if we did this, we're powerful. Now, I ain't going to say, when we get power, we, don't, we ain't going to do what they did. No, we don't do that. I, just in my mind, I don't believe black people do that at all. They just learned that crap and you see them do it more to each other. So, my thing is, when they come together, man, that's you're gonna see the power again. Because the NBA, NFL, NBA is, is the player. The United States is the people. Thank yeah. you. It's not one man. When everybody try to be that one person, and y'all know who I'm talking about in the NFL, when they try to beat them and beat all of them, what happened to them? It don't work. It does not work. But when you start standing together in all sports, you see. The impact. You see the change. You see they got Black Lives Matter in front of the United States of America house. Come on, man. Because we did what? Thank you. All right. Go ahead. I'm but no, I, I think I think it's good for the for the for all players, white and black, that more power to the player. Because I as I think the NFL does give players no power. They're really not supposed to think. They're supposed to say, hey, here's your paycheck. Don't question what we do. And that's yeah. it. That and, movie, you know, that move, you're right. That movement did help everybody. Of course, 100%. Everybody. Now, I just hope, besides those two, I hope more people. I hope skill positions. Like you, for example, if you play for the Jags when Del Rio was getting rid of everybody, you say, hey, man, I want to be a part of, you know, replacing Marcus Stroud or, you know, someone in the next one. I want to be a part of that because this is my legacy. This is John Henderson 20 years from now, you know. So I think that's the next progression is not just having the quarterbacks, it's getting skill positions, getting, you know, the – O-line, D-line, people out here speaking their minds, too. Because let's be real. I mean, the quarterbacks are important, but it's a team game. Hey, look, hey, look, I, I believe I want everybody to speak their mind, but it's always a way to do it. I, no, it is. Just, you feel me, Chip? It's, yeah. it's got to be a way that they do it. They got to be – you just can't say, I'm coming together and everybody start speaking. No, let's organize. Let's be strong. Let's let's have those people like Black Lives Matter step up in the front front and let them speak because – I don't see some powerful speakers, bro. And, yeah. and that movement, and they just and they speaking, and you seen them get in front of Trump's people, and he spoke. That one man and his two kids, he spoke, and they do. They couldn't do nothing but listen, cause he was right as a minute, and they cheered, and you know all that, man. So you just need the people up front to do that, that understands how to speak and give and, and put it out there the right way. Well, well, know, speaking about moving up front, um. I don't know if you want to touch on this, uh, like just saying how, you know, racism and all this stuff has been going on over the last like year with uh, George Floyd and all that. How do you feel about now? I know Urban Meyer said he, which Urban Meyer being the new coach of the Jaguars, said he vetted everybody personally. But over the last week, I think his name is Chris Doyle. Um, I think he was the highest paid strength and condition conditioning coach and in, in all of Division One football. I think he was making eight hundred thousand dollars a year. Um, how do you feel about him being hired on with all that stuff being out there? Because it was out there because he was already on paid administrative leave from um, his his previous program, and he still gets a job with the the Jaguars. And then I guess the backlash that now he's resigned. So how did you feel about that? Like as a player, would you? Would you have said something if if that stuff was out there and it's been talked about and it's been on the hush hush? I, 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 my first thought when I saw it, I said, "What the beep beep beep?" <laughs> <laughs> the beep? Wait a minute! Hold oh, so up. you had already knew about it? Oh, oh, I saw it. I was like, "Wait a minute!" He said that what six months ago, and he just <laughs> hired him. 
Oh, wait a minute. Hey, you Urban, you just did a rookie mistake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just did a rookie mistake right there. And I'm like, whoa. And that's my thought. I'm like, what the heck? What is this? What is it going to be like working out with him? <laughs> what, 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 man, you said as a player, and I'm like, what are you, you know my bench is wrong? And you finna snap on me because my technique ain't right? I don't know what they've been through in Ohio, but I'm just trying to imagine. I'm a grown man now. I think some people, hey, you can't talk to a grown man. I I would knock you out. Yeah, you're not a collegiate player. You're not, you, this is, <laughs> you're, you're not finna talk to me. We, this is a business. You're not finna, you see what I'm saying? So that would be my mindset. I'm like. Do you oh. guys think you would have had side conversations in the locker room? Like you what? and Freddie be like, yo. What? No, I, yeah, I think, I think, I, I know. It would have caused some strife because with with Riley Cooper, you remember what he oh. said when, when he was at the country oh, yeah. concert and he started using the n words. Like, yeah, like you're gonna have to have that conversation, and you don't want that in a, a brand new locker room. A brand new lock. That's my. That was my other thought. <laughs> we trying to build from one and fifteen, and you do, and we doing this. Yeah. Oh my God. Ain't now no. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a conspiracy out there. Ooh, do you think he resigned on his own, or you no. think Chad stepped in and be like, "Yo, I don't really care how he did." I'm just saying <laughs> he's done. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna be done with that. Y'all said he ain't asking how the hamburger was made. He just <laughs> <No>. ate it. <laughs> he's gone. So I, I mean that, that like because I was interested because I was like I thought he was gonna stay on, and I, that was gonna be a lot of conversations in that locker room. And that go to season. <laughs> the next, that next morning, once he got announced, I went on YouTube and oh my god, every national TV was like dog right. in the Jags again. Right. I can't yeah. believe this. Like we were like Keyshawn Johnson, like I was so excited for the Jags. I can't wait. And then this <laughs> happened. I'm like, I don't even want to see it no more. I'm done yeah. with Irvin. I'm like, whoa. You see, uh, somebody just threw that in. Our, what's that? It went from having everything and being talked about to I'm not fit to get talked about no more because what we did. Wow. You see the power. You see the power of people. You, hey, there go your example, John. Bam, right in front of you. That's how fast it can get. So done. let me ask you this then. So he was a head strength guy. So as a player, do you talk to the head guy? Like, what, what's his role really? Because a lot of guys, you know, Chip probably the same thing. Yeah. They give you guys these titles. What, what do, do you interact with these guys? Does he just oh, write stuff he, down? Like, what's he he's do? The strength, he's the head strength coach. That's, that's who give you all your – What's the name? Even though he got his assistant, he's the slight, like, oh, you know, man, well, he's the head. You talk to him just like you talk to the head coach. So is he like come up to you and say, hey, John, this is how you're supposed yeah, to bend? Yeah, come and get your workout done. You, you, you didn't do your workout today. Come and get it done. Hey, come on. Hey, you got to do this. Hey, come on. He's he's in charge of stretching, making sure everybody right in the front, strong, strength, condition, health, drinking, eating right, all that. He's in charge of all that. So you see him a lot. So yeah. <laughs> he's a yeah. water boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so he is an important hire to everyday operations. So I guess it's good that we got this out the way. But yeah. my thing is just so if you knew there was this kind of baggage, and like Chip said, you start a new locker room, new culture, and to bring this in here, I mean, that that's just crazy to me to even think about that, yeah. you know? He lucky I'm calling him a rookie mistake. I can imagine what everybody else calling him. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm okay, just, so okay, so yeah, you say that. So okay, he, we get a guy who's legit. So first day of training, is that in the back of your mind now about Urban when you meet him? Is that in the back of your mind about this guy, or are you gonna give him a a pass? No, I, I, no. I, that, that's I call, it was a mistake. It, hell, I made how many mistakes you know make? I mean, I, I can't sit. I can't judge him. I just call it a rookie mistake. Yeah, he made I, a mistake. Not a mistake. Don't fix itself. It's gone. Yeah, it, it was a mistake. Like, but I don't think that Urban Meyer's character should be in question because of that. Like, right. He, exactly. he did. He did hire the yeah. number one strength and conditioning coach in the NCAA. So, uh, um, I just think. If you vetted that and you were okay with it, uh, somebody in the room, hopefully somebody in the room said something and he doesn't have a bunch of yes men. Like right. like you said, when you talk to Jack Del Rio, right, like right. he has to have that checks and balances just like it is in the government. Hey, I don't think that was right. And obviously it fixed itself because he resigned. The last uh, of the day, one day. That's pretty quick though, let's keep it real. <laughs> one day. <laughs> I mean- Fix itself, like you said. Fix itself. And I, I don't think he resigned just by himself. He probably was like told, hey, probably cost 
the Jaguars a little bit of money, pay him to get him to go away and then let him go about his business. He'll get a job somewhere else. Somebody's going to take a chance on him. I'm just glad it's not the Jaguars. Right, right. So, 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 uh, so, so, John, what, what's up with your boy? Go on and let's talk about this pro day now. Go so, what's the news? Yeah, so, you know, yesterday, uh, Trevor did his early pro day because he's getting shoulder. Uh, had a lot of fans had a lot of questions, emailed me and texted me. Uh, questions for you, John. So they had the individual workout. Uh, he looked good. I don't know if you guys watched it. It's on yeah, YouTube yeah. NFL Networks, like 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, he had his special coach with him. Uh, I forget his name. Uh, Palmer, Jesse Palmer, his quarterback coach. Mm-hmm. So what's the light, John? You're, you're done with college now. You know you're going to the pro after the holidays. What's it like for a pro day? What was your pro day like? What did you do to prepare for a pro day? What was it like during the pro day or slash combine? And then – Tell everybody like what that experience is for. I don't know. Like, I, guess, I guess you know, with me and the agent, I, I had to get to a place where I was gonna work out. So it started with that preparation, getting your body right, eating right. So you know, that's all the way up to pro day. No, is that by yourself, or do you have someone chirping in your ear? Every day, hey, John, you gotta work out, or hey, you gotta eat this today. Like, yeah, yeah. I said, up, 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 me. It was basically my agent at the time. Uh, I stayed with him. You know. I stayed with him and it's now, you know, I mean, he took me to the workout, but I did a treadmill workout. Did y'all see, have y'all seen that online? Uh-uh. <laughs> now, now, this was back in 2001. I don't know, and I see it now. I'm like, man, I've been, I was doing, boy, let me tell you something. That trail, I fell once. I ain't fell no more. Boy, that thing is different. It's different than running out on the turf and stuff, but it, it increased my speed a little bit, man. You know, I think I ran like, I can't even remember what I ran, but it increased my speed. So that was one of the things that eating right and, you know, just anxious, man, I guess. Uh, how, I long, were you, how long were you working out a day? Like eight hours, 10 hours, two hours? No, no I just, I do, what, uh, two, about two hours, whatever it took to uh, stretch. And, and I, well, from there, I go to, I uh, went to massage and chiropractor and treatment, anything that was going on. I was, remember I hurt my knee, uh, ankle. High ankle sprain, so I got treatment every day on my high ankle sprain. So got to the combine, bang, 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 you know, got it done. So what was the combine like, like being like cattle? Because you all had just, you know, Henry, or no, it says what, uh, DT5, DT6. Like, what was that like being like cattle and you all just okay. getting measurements, questions? Like, what was that like? So imagine this, we go to Indy, right? So, okay, so you go through the different stations, you talk to everybody, so it's the, it's the treatment part. So it's this table, it's like, it's like 50 people and 50. And you're like, who are these? They all got all team positions, <laughs> all this. So you see them. I saw the first guy, and dude, they, I mean, one grabs this leg, other grabs that leg. They pull this way, that way. And if you had an injury, they pulling on you. They're pulling on your injury. <laughs> you understand? You understand what I'm saying? So my ankle. They turned that sucker this way, that way, all type of way. And you better not say, oh, <laughs> you better not. <clears throat> you just breathe. Turn off, oh, bitch, on your back. So my back was an issue. They thought my back, I was like, no more my back. I needed to stretch. I, I have to stretch a lot. They twist me this way. They brought my leg all the way over here. They put it back. Man, I, that was, it was, I felt like a piece of meat, man. Felt like I would get hit like a piece of meat. That that was so crazy. Would you do your pro day? Would you do your pro day at? Uh, Tennessee. Tennessee. Okay. Yeah. You did it. You did it on, on the field. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what's the difference between a pro day for you and like the combine? Do you do the same thing, or what was the difference? It's all the same. You just I think you can you can choose where you want to do it. And uh, okay, for your yeah, pro day. Yeah, because yeah. I, I was in Indy, but I didn't do it. I said, I don't want to do this part. I want to do that in Tennessee. Oh, wow. So, yeah, it's the agilities, uh, the hands, uh, all the stuff on the field. I, I told him I didn't want to do it there. Like, man, everybody was trying to get me to come on, come on. Uh-uh. I, I don't want to do what it. What made you want to go and do it in Nashville? No, uh, Knoxville? Yeah. It was just a preference. You got, you could do it. He said we could do that. I was like, my agent told me to do it in Knoxville. Mm-hmm. Basically, I think it was to be comfortable. Uh, you know, when you're nervous, you know, you, you'll mess up. 
but so you was right. already you was already used to being in that environment. There you go. Uh, yeah, you yeah. Know, we we we're we're uh, we're doing it in the the coach place where I'm gonna be playing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it was different. I was like, oh, no. So I did everything else but that. But yeah. So so what how. was the interview process like? Cause I heard that's pretty rough. So maybe ask them some off the wall oh questions. My gosh, I'm talking about it's a roll of them. It's just you and you got all the team. Did they ask about your your family? Did they ask about all <laughs> everything? Growing up from everything, then it started comparing me and Albert Hainsworth. <laughs> Who better? I'm like, it's to the point. I, I think I got to New York and they and it was or Cleveland. It was just like, man, go look at the tape, man. Because I'm not finna judge and sit here and tell you about I'm better than my brother. You know that that's you know because that was my teammate. I'm not finna sit and talk. He went. To, did he go to the? He went to the Titans. Yeah, he went to the Titans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're trying okay. to figure out who go, who go they take first and all that. I'm just. I told. I told him. Say, go look at the tape. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's it. That's like the only thing I can say. Go look at the tape. I'm not finna brag on myself. Yeah, go yeah. Look yeah. at the tape. You be the judge. It's your money coming to me. <laughs> so you made the right too. <laughs> that probably caught them off guard. Because most people are like, yeah, I'm better. But you're just like, judge the tape, man. Oh, man. I'm not going to bring down my and, and it's pretty long, too, right? It's like about an hour, two hours, right? Man, you going in. You, you. I mean, what's that? It takes the weekend or is it a week? And you got it. You visiting the team that's top 10. And especially where you, I mean, you just, that's a long day. That's a Do long you remember what the Jaguars day. asked you at all or? I, I don't remember, man. I don't remember. I can shoot. I remember running into them, leaving in the airport, one of them. And uh, I guess that was my sign saying, hey, I might be a Jaguar. I done ran into one of the head, the D-line coach and everything. <laughs> I was like, man. So do you get worried as a as a, a former player um, when, when people do not want to do those workouts? Oh, no, for me, I no, not for me, man. Cause, uh, cause, uh, and the reason I ask you that is because you know Trevor Lawrence, his was pushed up um by what like four weeks, John? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because he said he has to have uh shoulder surgery on his non throwing arm. And right. he came in at uh 213, 213, 214 when he usually walks around at like 230. So that's why they thought he was slimming down because he hasn't been lifting and stuff. So obviously he has a shoulder injury. So I mean, does that give you worry that he's got to have that surgery? I mean, this is non throwing arm. Non throwing arm, no. Nah, it'll take what six months to get that thing back feeling good. It'll yeah, be, it still be ready for the yeah. uh, pre for the preseason and stuff. It'll yeah, be camp. Yeah, I mean, he'll do. You know, I mean, you, you know, it's just it, he just got there. He got probably a double red jersey. <laughs> Don't touch you know, him. Hey, you know, have on the side of and everything. Uh, just, just let, leave that on. Watch that on, because when you, when you, now, let me take show y'all this. We are, we are brushed by the quarterback. You, know, <laughs> you got to get away from him when you brush by. You got to understand he does this, and you got to make sure you, you know, because you'll get Clear. tired if you go yeah. so, just so you can get your technique together. Yeah, you know, you can't just. You know, you don't want to hit him, so you kind of, woo, can't, don't swing at it or nothing like that. But I think they go, he'll be all right. He'll be the star. Uh, he's got six months, though. But so you know, what was you know, more nervousing for you, your pro day or draft day? Uh, pro day. <laughs> wow, really? Pro, pro day determines the track what you do, too. I mean, where you going, if, they, if you have a great pro day, that was all he was telling me, man, we got to have a great pro day. You gotta see how you move. Now, you did move. you and Albert do your pro days together, or uh, did he do? He did that Tennessee too. Yeah, yeah, he did that okay. Tennessee. So it's it's man, it's big, man. It's like yeah, you got to give it everything you got. The forty, the, the, the shuttle run, the leaping and jumping, and vertical, making sure you catch everything. Can you drop? How you use your hands, your eyes? I mean. Yeah, it's, they, they, man, they finna pay. It's like getting ready to give somebody 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 million dollars. You want to know everything. Everything. <laughs> yeah. right, yeah. you, still, you still drinking? Right, you still partying <laughs> the way you do? Huh, you still got that girl issue? Man, all right. All right, everything. All the way from what you did in high school to junior high to elementary. What? 
I, I, I couldn't believe in myself, John, but they knew everything. But how did you find out about her? <laughs> oh my gosh. In every police, every police record in history, they got access to everything. Federal and all. They can know if you've been locked in the Fed. They, <laughs> they know, they would know it all. <laughs> wow. I'm just, that's just what it, I mean, you finna get all this person this money, so, you know, you gotta do your background, you gotta do your checks and make sure it's right. That's it's crazy. Real. It's real. Yeah, because it, you, I think the Jaguars messed up on what, what was that receiver? Blackman. I, I it, huh? Blackman. <laughs> they, there's a story about him that um, some of the NFL uh, scouts uh, went to, he played for Oklahoma State University. Yeah. And they, they knew that he hung out, out in this bar. And this scout went to the bar seven days in a row. And every day, Blackman was there. And then that's when they said they passed on them. Yeah. <laughs> and the Jaguars didn't do their due diligence because you see what happened. Yeah. So hey, I believe you when you say <laughs> if they were sitting in a bar for seven days to see if black men was coming. And they're like, that's not going to be the one. So yeah. Yeah. yeah they did. And they did that to us while we were playing. I was, I was like, man, I know you, man. I'm going to be down. Like, I, I, y'all checking on us. Like, boy, I said, oh, man, I am a grown man. You sitting there checking on me. <laughs> I, I couldn't do. I couldn't do number pass him a drink. Here you go. Oh, uh, gotta love. Wow. It. Hey man, they, they, they protect their stuff, man. That's yeah, they, especially they, now. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, Big John. They, if it was social media, they would have seen you in that club. Right? <laughs> oh my goodness! I, I, I don't. I don't think I could. I would. I probably would have stopped. Because <laughs> there ain't no way y'all gonna see Big Ian with his shirt out like this. <laughs> hey, can you can you imagine Coughlin seeing that video? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh man! But uh, anyway, what was I? What were we at? We still Jaguar news. We don't got all my Jaguar news out the way. I mean, right now it's it's a slow time. You know, the yeah. Trevor Lawrence thing was big news. Um, so are y'all both like all, are y'all both set on him being the first round pick? Yeah, right, after man. the pro day, and everybody's saying it. Mechanics looks good. Uh, what, I would like what, the hat. I'd like to. I mean, so here's the thing: <laughs> you, you got to look at two things. Okay. So you want to win now. If you trade, because a lot of talks of trading Lawrence for Watson and Russell, yeah. you do that, you're bringing in thirty to forty million dollars a year. So that we don't, we're not like Tampa Bay, which we'll get to in a little bit. We don't have the team around it to bring the quarterback to pay it. So we have to do it like um, a rookie deal quarterback and then pay people around it to get better. And that's the way that they've been doing the Super Bowl. So I think that's the only way is, is through him. I mean, with Fields, you can see him. If I had a number two pick, oh, I'd be all about Fields. But we've had Trevor Lawrence. And he's like, he's like John. Ever since they were little, top, they knew they were going to be the man, yeah. you know. John was a man in high school. John was a man in college. John was a man in the pros. Same thing. You know, Trevor, high school. He's only lost two games in college. You know, he's the man in college. And 41 just, games straight in high school. He's yeah, so, I mean, you yeah. want that pedigree. So, yeah. I mean, I think it's a no-brainer on there. My biggest issue is trying to get a backup quarterback to help him, you know. That's my, I think, the biggest key. Because you can't have Gardner Minshew doing that stuff. I mean, he's not going to help him out. <laughs> he's trying to take his job. He'll probably, he'll probably, he'll probably drink some crown with him. You know, you know he loves what about you, Chip? Do you think you think Trevor's the man for Jacksonville, the savior? And John don't want to hear this. To say I call him the savior. Uh, yeah, because I, I feel like that's all. I, I feel like we never really got the the quarterback. Like I know we had Mark Pennell. I know we had David Garrod. I know we had Leftwich. Like and. Congratulations to the left witch too. Yeah. And, and shout out to that and, dumbass. And reporter. Blaine. Get to Blaine some love now. I, I forgot he was on the team. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh and shout out to Left Witch and that reporter that got him confused with the defensive coach, man. Shame on you. Like, you're a professional. <laughs> Talking about how'd you keep him off the field? He said, I don't know. You're gonna have to talk to the defensive coach about that. I, I do offense. <laughs> so <laughs> uh yeah, I feel like he is gonna be. I, I feel I'm optimistic, but I'm a Jaguars fan. I've been optimistic for 27 years. You know what I mean? So every year I say it's our year. I yeah, almost sound like a Cowboys like fan. <laughs> every year. You that job? You always <laughs> believe. Yeah, I, I, well, I couldn't believe last year. I'm sorry, bro. If I trade, if we trade you away and Stroud, and knowing you left with you know backups playing, come on, one part comes and you realize like, wait, 
you traded all your best players and you got the backups playing. You expect to win. This this ain't a movie, baby. <laughs> this ain't replacements. Yeah, no, you have to have the stars. Yeah, I, I think if we get Trevor Lawrence and we just don't throw him to the fire <laughs> and get some people to protect him and get him some some assets, I feel good about the uh, Robinson, the running back. Um, I, I just think he needs some quicker re- receivers. I feel good about uh, DJ Shark and uh, Westbrook and all those people. But Westbrook won't be here next year. I hate to break it to you, brother. I, I, I doubt. I know he will Chenault's a decent one. Uh, yeah, Cole, Chenault. I try to bring him back on a cheap deal. Uh, the dude who won um, for the Godwin from the Bucks, I'd like to bring him in. Uh, yeah, something like that. What about you, Big John? I know Big John's kind of like Tony G over here. They've been hating on me because I've been about TL since we got the first oh, pick. I, bro, after, watching the, after watching the draft, his pro day, what do you think? I think he's going to be great, man, but he don't, he don't need that, that guy that we talked about. That quarterback to help them get through those those times, times to yeah. see to see it to see it how it needs to be seen in the NFL because it's the different level. It, it wasn't the same for me in college when I went to D-line. It's like I, I know everything, but man, it's it's a little bit. Let me let, let me let you learn this right here. Tony Bracken would tell me, Barry Smith and all them, and show me. All right, all right, okay. You always learning, man. So you, you learn. And you learn the NFL lifestyle from other players because I know as coaches they get special people. Like they bring in like the the quarterback whisperer, what's his name, Luck or something like that. I can't remember. House. They bring in House to help them out, or you know Palmer. What about like guys like you? Is there like a defensive line whisperer that comes and says, teaches you how to be the ultimate D line guy? Is that even a thing? No, no. You just I I just feel like we. Learn. I learned from Reggie, watching Reggie White tape, watching Sap. You know, he, he, he said he can get off the ball quick. So you want to see what he's doing. It's like, he's reading. What is he doing? He's reading the guard. Okay, I'm not even paying attention. I'm just like, I'm going to get off the ball. No, you get off the ball quick, but you can read the guard. Hey, listen to the snap. Is that quarterback? Watch his hand. Is he doing this? Man, it's everything, man. It's always learning. Always learning better. To be better, and then that's what I that's how I picked it all up, man. Just and, and listen to. So w- my question is: When we start the big John Henderson camp for these rookies coming in, or these draft picks, we can make some money, baby. Teach them uh, technique. Soon, uh, soon COVID over with. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> soon as everybody back outside. Yeah, but Chip, but back. Chip, am I right though? Isn't that I, weird though? Like how the quarterback position they get special coaches on their off season to help them with mechanics, to help them with footwork. But there's nothing for other positions like that. At least we never heard of. There might be, but you don't hear about it. No, um, no, I, I never know because I know you're talking about the quarterback whisper because they go out in California. He throws with them like he works with up and coming high schoolers, college to quarterbacks, NFL quarterbacks. And I don't know. Like I think, who do you think is the best DL in line right now, uh, in the game right now? Um, yeah, you know, uh, Aaron Matthews. Donaldson. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's definitely up there. Yeah, dog. <laughs> I, I can't. I'm trying to, man, look, I ain't got a good memory of people's name, but I know that's one of them. But this is crazy. Like, so, like, my, my thing is, it's like, so every year you're supposed to get better. So, John, you had to go on your own and get better. There wasn't a guy you worked with that got you better. I'm saying that's just a little crazy to me. Or, like, the Jaguars wouldn't put people in there and say, hey, John, you know, in the off season we're going to, you know, we have this guy going to come down here and do this, 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 and help you on – Yes, that's what's so weird, crazy to me. Like understand, you do it on your own. Understand that be top. It's very simple. We know how we, we find out how to read the guard. We go either line up in the three technique, two eye, one eye, nose, head up. All right. So we first thing, learn how to get off the ball, learn how to take on a block, shield, make top, side to side, run. You see that? I, I can get that from the tape. Quarterback. Huh. It's a lot, ain't it? Yep, got to know what the D line look like. Got to know what the middle line back look like. Here's the outside line back cover. Then cover two, three, four, five. There's a prevent. I don't know what you see that. It just got more. You see all that? Now he got to see all this. <laughs> he got to see if that defense audible into whatever it audible is. He got yeah, I'm to see going if defense, he's coming I'm going down. defensive he line or kicker, it, baby. He got to see if it's a corner coming, a linebacker coming, and he got to hear if the offensive line is calling a stunt. He. Man, why you think you want the crowd to get loud? 
when he because the center is calling play, he calling and if he can't hear which side they're coming on from the centers calling the play, he got to hear that too. He's man, he's doing so. Yes, in the whisper or whatever you want to call, it, they need it. You want your quarterback? You want your quarterback be bad? Speaking of bit, hey, speaking of bad quarterbacks, uh, let's get them. The greatest white man I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think he should be put on the Mount Rushmore. Tom Brady won the Super Bowl. He did. Uh, so, how did you feel about seeing him win? I'm a two part question for you, John. How did you feel, feel about seeing him win his seventh Super Bowl? And we got to witness this. And what do you say to him being a system quarterback and him doing it the Patriot way and Bill Belichick got him those championships? Man, I, man, you got to, first of all, to get to the Super Bowl, man, is an honor. So, and all the work he put in. And as a player, player to player, as we look at Tom Brady as a player, competitive, what he do. I usually, I heard Freddie T in his show, man. I am athlete, y'all check that out. I am athlete. And he said Tom Brady chewed him out because he messed up. But he said he understand. It's the game. It's the game. It's like, I was like, man, I done been there before somebody chew you out. And you'd be like, okay, he's just trying to tell me to do right. He's trying to yeah. tell me, you know? like, calm down, bitch. Don't run it up. And don't hang off of that. We got to win this game. So, man, and, you know, seeing him, especially Peyton, too, but what Tom has done, man, is going in the books. He needs to go on and be in the Hall of Fame right now. Ain't no point why you even wasting time. <laughs> Ain't nobody done it. Yeah. And that's what it is. When nobody's done it, man, that's the confidence. You see it, and you congratulate that, man. I don't need People need to stop hating. I mean, it's the game. It's football. You I mean, it's a sport. We love it. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, I like the way he celebrated. I don't give a damn what nobody say. Yeah, it, oh, he, it, got, he, he got, got boat, drunk. Baby. Yeah. He on the boat, baby. <laughs> oh, he, got, he was drunk as a skunk, man. I never seen hey. that. Hey, hey, hey he, he won me $250, so thank you. you. There you go. <laughs> yeah, so I bet that they was like, you're you, you going you not going to take Patrick? I said, I'll put 250 on time. And I was nervous. At the beginning of the game, but uh, you know, third uh, or fourth quarter. No, that's, that's normal. I, so for me, I just said normal. He yeah. just feeling it. He just <laughs> feeling it. what they trying to do to him. That's what he's feeling. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I done seen that face too many times. <laughs> like, yeah. I said, I said, Don't worry, man. I, and then hold on. I called a play. I was in now, I was cooking something. I said, Where they at? I told my dog, where they at? He said they in the red zone. Oh, here it comes. Here it come. I already knew it. I said, oh. he's gonna, he gonna do two more. He gonna go inside and catch it underneath, or he gonna do it up, oh, man. It's like that play ain't went nowhere. And I'm like, I don't understand. When red zone come, you better put your eyes on that big son of a gun. Because <laughs> it is going into his hand. Because yeah. nobody, when he get the ball, you imagine trying to stop that. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. That is huge. He's. I, I just like that. Yeah. And when they could and when they didn't stop it, it I knew then it was over. He got two touchdowns on him. And I seen a thing the other night. He was like, Man, Tom, thank you for bringing me here. He's like, We did it again. I can't believe it. That they, they were laughing about it because they didn't think they could I don't know if they really thought they could win, but they're like, dude, I haven't played in a year. Come down here, you know, like I think they even shocked themselves a little bit. Yeah. I mean, but you just never come you never compete against that man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, man. Unless Eli Manning is on the field, then <laughs> hey, I want to give a big shot to Keith Vaughn, uh, Pearl Cole, BC baby. He was one of the guys on that one championship. You know, my high school is going to get deep now, baby. We win the championship. We got Pro Bowl. <laughs> we got people all over signing everywhere. Congratulating to all them young men. Hey, I'm proud of y'all, but Pearl Cole for life, baby. Hey, hey, that Tom, man, enjoy the tequila too. Oh right. man, for real. Hey, can you believe? Hey, first of all, I've never I'm seen him here. wildly like that ever in his life. Oh my god! <laughs> god, god and you see him that, throw the, the trophy. You see him throw the trophy from a boat. Like, what are I you was, doing? I was hoping. I was hoping it fell in so everybody could say, "Ah." I'm like, first of all, y'all, y'all don't know nothing because he go. All he gonna do is just, yeah. Need another one. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. That's something with them hand delivered straight on down. Come on, man, y'all. Come on. So what was it like playing against him? What did you try to do personally? And then the, what did the team try to do to stop him? I mean, it just seems uh, like it wasn't even a game. It was just, it, it seems so easy for him. And he's 40-something. It's like. 43. Man, 43. <laughs> of, course of course it was easy for him now because he got all the knowledge. He, 
all that knowledge in that brain be done seen at all. Whatever you bring, and you might get me, but I'm gonna catch I'm gonna catch you on the next one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he just he just you know know because when we were going out there, I said, man, we gotta get Tom Brady. So man, like you know, on the playoff game, that was the first play, bum, bum, got him. Yeah, sack Tommy Brady. Yeah, I got that sack in my first playoff game. But you know what I'm saying? And I pulled a hamstring out on the first after that. But anyway, you just our thought was to always disrupt the quarterback. He's the guy, you know. If he can, if we disrupt him, he can't give it to uh, Grunk. Grunk, he can't give it to him. He can't give it to him. So that was the point. And if y'all remember when we played the what's the name? You know they all. You know I put, I used to block stuff down. And you know I talked to Seymour. And he said they would have these bags up. And every time you see him in, uh, you know his workout over there, they mm-hmm. throw the bags up. So that's how he trained. He training for. I told you he had to know everybody on the field, a quarterback. So he's training for that. He's training. That's how they practice against us. Cause me and Stroud hands with block down balls. He's putting it up. They doing this to him. He's trying to get wow. it. Wow. Yeah, yeah. See, you got. Hey, man, it's, it's not easy. Come on, come on. You said Marcus Stroud. Yeah, man with Stroud. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Always, we was back. We was the back king. We call us the back king. <laughs> we bat down ball. We didn't get too many. Except we bat down all the ball. And so that's how he practiced against, you know, the team. I mean, when he did his personal workout. And that's how he prepared, man. And you got to give it to him, man. Yeah, man. Work, hard, work hard, man. And you can so, you, so a lot of people are trying to criticize that with all the Super Bowls, the defense comes in and saves them. And he just does enough to win. Do you agree with that, or do you yeah, think he is the go? He's done his job, too. Yeah. <laughs> did, y'all, did, did, did you watch the game like I watched it? <laughs> the defense, Jim. Hey, oh, yeah. yeah. The defense was nice. The defense was nice, but yeah. nobody didn't think it was going to be – they were going to hold Patty Mahomes to th- that amount of points. I know he had turf toe and all that. It seemed like his limp – Got worse as the score went up, but or was, that, was that just to say, hey, I was like, hey. yeah, I got question that. Yeah, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm getting thrown out. I'm like, oh, my shoulder, my shoulder. Turf toe is real. So turf toe is real. That that chunk do hurt. You got to press off on the foot. So the yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm just, we're, it's yeah, jokes, sure. Patty McCall's. It's jokes. I ain't coming for you, oh, but yeah. we can talk about that. They said that limp got a little suspect once it got up right. to like twenty points. Oh, but like like the Patriots was saying, I mean like the Bucks was saying on the side, he, he's a magician. Y'all heard that? Y'all know that? Like, <laughs> you see, the ball was still getting to the people, man. It's like I thought I thought they could catch some, but you know, it just, and that defense was strong at the point. Man. Yeah, yeah I, I love I love Pat Mahomes, but I don't think he'll ever pass up Tom Brady. I think no. this can be 30, 40 years if you can see something like that. That man's disciplined to only eat plant based products. You know what I'm saying? Like. The way he, the way he take just, care, he take care of his body like LeBron James. Like yeah. LeBron James spends a million dollars on upkeep. So yeah, that dude, I, he looks better right now than he did when he was fucking like twenty. So <laughs> he looks slimmer. The man look clean cut. Like he look, he looks good. So I'm gonna put you on a spot, John. So when you got released by the Jags, you went to the Oakland. If yeah. you were to win a Super Bowl with Oakland. How much would you have loved it, giving payback to your old team? And how much do you think Tom felt that same way about spiting Bill Belichick and saying, all right, you didn't need me. I'm not good enough. Who won a Super Bowl their first year? You think you would have felt the same way? You think Tom felt the same way? Or was he more professional about it? And I think, look, this goal, I think it's deep. I don't know. Because the relationship they had was so freaking deep. I didn't know. How they had a deep relationship. That hurt. Tom, so when something hurts you, you get pissed off, and you go do what you what laser you focus. Do. Yeah, yeah, you just all right, Myers. Uh, you got a, You already a great <laughs> quarterback. You just became even because what you did to come on, man. And then you know he said that you know I seen him, but anyway, man, I just think it hurt him more, and he really wanted to prove that he did it, and I'm pretty I congratulate him on that too. So I'm happy for uh, I'm happy for Fournette. Yeah. Like, like, I, oh, yeah, point there. Yeah. Good job, baby. It's crazy yeah. how much he's grown up. It just shows you, like you said the other day, John, we were talking it's about leadership. There was no leadership in Jacksonville. Ding, ding, and, ding, ding, ding. and and he, he thought he was a young thug still. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, be wild. 
he gets around with some established people like Gronk and Tom. And look, he changed his tune so much. And he even said naturally, hey, I apologize. I just wasn't grown when I played for Jacksonville. And so what does Jacksonville need, John? We John need- Henderson on the field again, baby. That's true, too. <laughs> but we need that leadership there. If you got it, man, we're going to do it. That's the point. That's it. I just hope they – can y'all hear me? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so I want to give Dan Scooter some huge props. So Dan was on our show last week on the cook-off, which he won. And he gave a pointer regarding John. Remember how he's talking about how the quarter or the running back is? Now you can tell if it's going to be run or pass. Yeah. That sucker really worked, man. So we told you. I, I texted him. I said, damn, Dan. I said, this sucker really works. Should, so should we, should we, try to, we trying to school him on how we look at the game, how, how we see it as a player, and how y'all see it as a lot of people see it as a fan. Some fans can notice that. They've seen that because they play Madden all the time. <laughs> Those mad players, now them, them, they, they like football players, but on the screen. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> they know they, they, they know that stuff. They know that cover too. I, I'll be amazed when I see that. It's just amazing. I'll be like, wow. So, like Dan said, so when the quarter, so the, some of the running backs, when they're two or three yards deep, usually it's going to be a run. When they get close to the quarterback or act like they're talking to him, then that's going to be a block. And yeah. I think it was like I was at eighty percent time. He was talking about how Tony Romo. Everybody thinks how great Tony Romo is. You know, I'm like, damn, Tony Romo knows everything. He's calling the plays before this. And Dan's like, it's not that hard. So, and then John <laughs> saying the same thing. It's like, y'all, y'all have these secrets. You're not going to tell us average fans so we can feel confident. Like, Chip can come over and say, Chip, man, see what's about to happen right here. This is what's going to happen. You know, I'm trying to look like I'm the man. But y'all just yeah. hiding back techniques and secrets. Yeah, you you see it, man. It's, just, it's, it's that way, man. But look, man, before we, I know we got to get ready to go. I'm having a great time. I done lost track of time. Yeah, it's all good because every time Chip come on, we get all excited. Hey, Chip, <laughs> I, mean, hey, you know hey, I give it to him. Song. Chip's been on his best behavior today. I mean, oh, he, he, he ain't yeah. tired. Hey, my, 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 my wife set me down and she said, It's not your damn show. I said, yes, man. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, I'm gonna be a little bit, uh, you know, let John have his moment, you know. Yeah. I, I, I I love, love, love coming on here. And uh, you know, I look forward to getting those texts on 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 Saturday. But try to get me on a Friday. All right, yeah. <laughs> let me know because <laughs> I, I'm at home babysitting. I had to I had to put the kids on on, on Nintendo Switch. I said, "Please be quiet, Daddy." Recording and uh, yeah, so brother, we appreciate you. Yeah, but I'm going to give me a quick. Let me get this uh this thing I wanted to say. But man, we appreciate you this is for Black History Month, and this is for, you know, this is what's going on. For all the past, present, and future, man, you know I had to write this down, y'all couldn't remember. But I just saw the past, present, future uh, people that's paved the way for those that's done it back then and those that are doing it now and those that are going to do it in the future, it's man. Two o'clock. I just want to honor you and thank you. We want you to keep on pushing. There's people that's fighting today in the movement. Just keep on going. Do what you can do in your community. You know what I'm saying? And everybody do their part. And that's how we get. You know, everybody can't do what Black Lives is doing. We can do something here and we can do something there. And it, it all can mean the same and doing the same movement. So let's just let's just keep going, man. Don't stop. Just go get hard. It's going to get hard, but don't give up and keep going. And we thank you. We praying for you. God bless you. Anything y'all want to say before we get out of here? Hey, make oh. sure you don't forget Valentine's Day. I want y'all to get in trouble with that special lady. <laughs> Uh, so, <laughs> and hey, if you want to take my advice, go around after noon time. That's why you get fifty percent off. So, save yourself a little money. Yeah, the big chocolates. You know, usually they cut them off half price. Um, so uh, thank y'all for having me on the show. You can follow me um at IMS Podcast. Uh, I'm Chip T, uh, the co-host of the Irresponsible Mentors. And as always, that is so irresponsible. Thank y'all for having me. <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, we are done. JFL would love to say. <laughs> <laughs> hey, John, man, I'm going to send you. The, I got to get you the link for a real soundboard now. All right. <laughs> All right.